If you've kept up to date with the recent coverage at Computex 2017, you would have seen that Intel have just released their new line of extreme processors. This includes the new i5, i7, and even the all new i9 processors. Now, Intel claims that these new i9 CPUs are for megatasking and extreme use cases, including 4K, 12K, and VR gaming. This slide here is part of their marketing material and is basically saying that non-K processors are unacceptable for 4K gaming. This encourages users to pay a decent price for a processor if 4K gaming is what they intend to do, often shelling out $300 US dollars or more for the top tier overclockable i7. But what difference really is there between a $325 quad core 8 thread overclocked i7 7700K and a $59 Pentium G4560 when it comes to 4K gaming? To investigate this, I booted up Battlefield 1, Doom, and Witcher 3, and benchmarked both the 7700K overclocked to 5.0 GHz and the budget king Pentium G4560. Both were paired with 16 GB of 2666 MHz RAM, which is sufficient for 4K gaming, and a GTX 1070, which meant I did have to turn some of the texture settings down to reach that 4K 60fps mark. This doesn't affect the testing however, as AI and other CPU dependent settings were left as is. Let's kick it off with Witcher 3, and here we're seeing both the $59 Pentium G4560 and the $325 i7 processor neck and neck. Both reported an average of 48 FPS, which is below our target of 60 FPS, but don't worry, our next two titles do hit that 60 FPS mark. The playing experience was exactly the same for both benchmarks, which I ran numerous times. Although the frame rates are tighter for the 7700K, I doubt any of you would be prepared to spend an extra $250 for 2-3 FPS. For Battlefield 1, a very CPU intensive title, we get a similar picture. Here the 7700K was just 1 FPS in front of the G4560 on average, however the 7700K does take a noticeable lead in bottom 1% and 0.1% of frame rates. Still though, the Pentium processor is getting us 95% of the way there. For Doom running 4K on the Vulkan API, the results are closer than ever. The G4560 returned an average of 60 FPS, the 7700K reporting 61 FPS. The bottom 1% and 0.1% of frames, again, yielded a playing experience which was virtually identical for both processors. So what can you guys take away from all this? Basically, when it comes to CPU performance in gaming, the largest factor of performance is frame rate. The more frames that your GPU is pushing to your CPU, the faster your CPU needs to work. Despite marketing material from companies telling you that total pixel count is what matters and that 4K is extremely demanding on your CPU. In gaming, the CPU does not deal with individual pixels, that's the role of the GPU. Instead, it deals with complete frames. So if you're planning on building a gaming rig targeted at 60 frames per second, whether that's 1080p, 1440p or even 4K, the CPU is definitely where you could be saving your money. Pairing a GTX 1080 Ti with an i3 or Pentium sounds like a terrible combination, but if you really just want to experience 4K gaming at 60fps, that's definitely going to be the most economical way of achieving that. Now what about the 7700K? When is it appropriate to put that in a gaming PC, and why do I have one in mine? As I was saying earlier, the frame rate is the largest factor of CPU performance and utilization in gaming. Lower frame rates are less demanding, and higher frame rates are more demanding. So high-end processors make sense for high refresh rate gaming, like 144 frames per second for example. But again, if 60fps is your thing, then the $59 Pentium chip may not just be a bad pick. Thanks again for watching guys, I really hope Intel's marketing team see this one. Don't forget to subscribe for similar content in the future, and I'll see you in the next one.